okay we are uh, okay so so for the, uh, let's okay uh, proof proof of, of this thing is is okay so let, let me denote this this case number one so for the case number one what what we know is that the denominator is much bigger so what we are going to do is we have limit of for x to infinity and so we just take this this um, x to n and put it out of p so so we get px over x to n inside ah, as, 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 as it was here and we do the similar thing here yeah. so now we reduce these these two things and the, uh, and the big point is that that in in here we are just going going to 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 take a look and uh, sum these things inside and all of them will be at most constant so so this is this is equal to to some constant exactly it will be equal to to a n yeah? and this thing there will be still some some x to x to something because here will be uh, here will be b m x m minus n still still living inside so this will going bigger and bigger so, so just this term will make this go to go to infinity yeah, so we have some constant over infinity which is zero exactly as it was here yeah, for the for the second second thing here we do we do exactly the same thing but what we obtain is the fraction which in this case is not going to to infinity because there will be term b n plus something something maybe over over some some negative uh, over some negative some negative values like this so so this will go to b n plus something really small this will go to zero this will go to n plus something small a n plus zero so this goes to nothing else than a n over b n yeah and you can you can do you can do the the same thing for the first part it is very 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 simple and this is this is some kind of uh, some kind of theorem that that like you can you can very easily discover it when when you are calculating a lot of lot of exercises like this so so if if your teacher is is forcing you to to calculate a lot of things like this and always write the 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 complete complete list of of steps and uh, even like like show why why they hold you can just start with proving this theorem and they said okay according to this theorem result is this 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 and this and you don't really have to have to do it so when you're in your learning analysis you should do a few exercises like like this at first to so so you can get some basic feeling how it works and after some time you will notice this pattern and you can you can you can automatize it and use it much faster so so our thing is that now we we know how to compare polynomials and so if we get two polynomials we're basically done and uh, these, these polynomials are, are like basic functions in mathematics and they are like very much used but but maybe we would like to we would like to also be able to to compare different different quantities so so we have something which is which is called exponential function and exponential function is is basically basically um defined that um, uh, exponential sequence but we could also make it as function but uh, sequence is is a n is is some some value q and then uh, q to q to n so so after each step you multiply it by q so it's going to infinity very very fast and the question is how fast so so we have these these exponentials uh, so q is larger than one and the question is how fast it tends infinity um, for example, we can we can compare it to to polynomials. Yeah? So so I have this this exponential here, and I have some polynomials. So so what's what's the limit of, of q n over some polynomial p p n yeah? for n going to going to infinity? Uh, okay, let me let me denote it uh, by 
maybe q2 q2x it will be better because we won't um, mess up with the highest highest term in the in the polynomial and also so some for something like this and maybe you know that the answer is always infinity you don't really even have to read what was here you can write immediately infinity because exponential is always going to to be the polynomial in the speed yeah? so exponential is always much faster yeah? so you could have you could have even even comparing things like like n to n to 100,000 and and let's say let's say uh, one point zero 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 one to n and even in this thing after some time this will get much much larger yeah? so it doesn't seem so when when you see that first when you when you look at first uh, I don't know uh, ten ten terms or ten million terms it can still be much much smaller but after some time this exponential is going to catch up and will be much much faster yeah, so so this this can seem some somewhat surprising but but it's really really true so so how to how to prove this and this is actually not very simple if you if you see it at first because we we just don't have so good good understanding of what what exponential is yeah so so there is let me let me start simply with one thing which is which is called uh, called Bernoulli's in e inequality yeah so so we have we have in this case our polynomial will be just just a constant term and what we are going to prove that that q to x is larger than uh, now x, for example, in this in this case, um, yes, uh, this actually is c times c time c time x can be can be even even here, for example, but okay, something something like this, yeah. So much uh, we can we can actually we can actually prove something something bigger something better. Um, Actually, actually, I wonder what what's like the original Bernoulli's inequality. But but basically, basically, we can start with something as simple as this. Yes. Okay. So what we what we know is that Q is one plus something at least something small. So let me denote it by epsilon. So we will take a look. What is the one plus epsilon to to x? Now x is some natural number just to just remind you is in in this case here yeah and maybe you have seen some some uh, things like this in 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 combinatorics uh, maybe maybe you you remember uh, maybe maybe you remember uh, one one theorem about it yeah? so this this theorem is is binomial theorem and it says that that 1 plus x to n is equal to some some long long sum in which there will term x to 0 appear to to x to n and it will it will look like this that I will have n over n n choose and choose 0 times x to 0 plus n choose 1 times x to 1 and then so on to n choose n x to n so some some huge amount of terms like this yeah okay so so why why does this hold it's uh, actually not, not not so difficult so so let me imagine that I won't abbreviate this this multiplication this product like this, but I will I will write all all of the parentheses. So here is is one one plus x n times written using using parentheses. And now we are going to to uh, expand all, all these parentheses. So you will obtain some some s series of, of terms, some some um, some uh, 
large sum of, of, of monomes and each monom is, is going to be to be product of, of one term from from each of, of these these parentheses. So for example we can we can make like we can take from this parenthesis x and from this one and for so on and from, from this for example x and we will obtain some term let's say let's say x to x to six x to six. Yeah? Yeah so so something something like, like that. And uh, we take all these terms and sum them together. So we have some huge, huge amount of terms. Yeah? So, so uh, there will appear terms of of x to x to at most n because there are we can from each parenthesis we can take at most one uh, we can we take uh, we can take at most one x. So in total there are n parentheses, so we can take at most n x's. Yeah. So there will be some term x to n. Yeah, with with some coefficient a n plus a n minus one x to n minus one and so on plus to a zero x to zero and we just need to do one more thing and to estimate values of, of these coefficients so if we would like to, to take term which has x to r yeah, so what we have to do basically is to pick up r of these of these parentheses yeah, so so I I will highlight them. So so for example, I will take I will take in this case I, I took x here and I took I took x somewhere here and somewhere here. Yeah, so so I, I do I highlight a few of the parentheses. I highlight I choose choose R parentheses and uh, in this parenthesis we will pick the term x and in the other parenthesis we will pick the term 1. So in total we will obtain x to r and the question is in how many ways we can choose r parenthesis from n. This is exactly n choose r. Yeah, so so this this gives the answer to binomial th theorem. Okay, so so we have the, the binomial th theorem. Yeah, so what what we can do is to apply this theorem and so we take 1 plus epsilon to, to x so this thing is equal is equal to what? is equal x to 0 epsilon to 0 plus x choose 1 epsilon to 1 and so on now and now we will we will need another fact about about these these combinatorial numbers. Yeah? So so the main idea is that epsilon is something something positive. So these these things are some positive constants and we don't really care about them that much. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think I can I can actually I can actually prove even like the the like most most general uh, statement that that um, this exponential is always always growing much faster than any polynomial, yeah? and so something something like this. So like first of all, we have x is always positive, so this this quantity here is positive, and this also. So we have some sum of positive terms. So we can forget about some of them and it will make the sum only smaller. Uh, so we forget all of them except one. Uh, so we have polynomial P, P X, which is X to A N X to N plus something. So we will forget everything except except X choose n plus 1 to epsilon n plus 1 yeah? and this this thing is, is like extremely extremely small but it's still some kind of positive constant so so just we need to to examine this this thing and what what I claim that even even just this one term 
is much larger.